Welcome back, everybody. My name is Jake Allen. I work over here at Evan Vault, and today I'm going to teach you how to vault your ordinals using the Taproot address in Emblem Vault. So here we go. All right, everybody. So first, what we're going to do is we're going to go over to emblem.finance, and this is the DAP so you know where to create a vault. So you're gonna go over here and you're gonna click create and I preloaded it already. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna hit next and then you're gonna type in the vault name and the vault description. This is user generated, so it's up to you to describe and write in what is the right name. We recommend putting the assets name and then in parentheses, the inscription number. This helps with the flagging system. And then the vault description, you can do whatever you'd like. I generally just copy whatever it is on their Twitter, on their website, it makes it a little bit easier and fair. And then you're gonna go over and you're gonna choose a file and you're gonna find the image. This is a Taproot Punk. So we're going to use the Taproot Punk image. It costs 250 Koval to mint a vault. So if you have never minted a vault before, you're gonna to have to actually approve Koval. So before it says create vault, it's gonna say approve Koval. This gives the DAP, the ability to spend 250 Koval every time that you want to create a vault. You only have to prove it once, and then after, thereafter, it just pulls Koval from your wallet, which you see over in the top right. So then what you're gonna do is you're gonna go over and you're gonna hit create vault. And once you hit create, the vault is not minted, but basically it's preparing it as a vault and it's going to show you an address of where to send your asset. And so once it's done loading, what you're gonna do is you're gonna see here, there's an owner address. It, the owner address is 000, and that's because you haven't minted it yet, so it's stuck to just you. And what you can do here, after the image will load to, you're gonna go over to Taproot, and you're gonna see an address. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna copy that. And for some, the option doesn't really matter which one you wanna do. You can either mint the vault and then send the asset, or you can send the asset and then mint the vault. Personally, I like minting the vault so that I know it's a transferable asset. Some people like it the other way for whatever reason. So for this example, we're gonna mint the vault first and then we're gonna send the ordinal in afterwards. So you're gonna come over and you're gonna hit sign. It's gonna give you a delayed minting message. And then you'll see at the bottom it says verifying. And then you're gonna come over and you're gonna press mint. So the gas seems a little bit high right now. It's 30 guay and it's costing me $20 to mint. So a little expensive. So we recommend doing it on a day to where gas is low. Generally, you can do it sometime late the weekend nights, Friday night or Saturday night EST. It's generally when gas is lowest. And so as you see here, the vault is minted, as you can tell now, because there's an option to unlock the vault and get the private keys. What this does is burn the vault and it reveals the private key so that you can import it to somewhere else. And this is where we will go over something else in a different episode. So what we're gonna do here now is we're gonna send the ordinal into the vault. So we're gonna go over here and we're gonna copy the address for Taproot. And then I'm gonna go over to my Sparrow wallet and in the Sparrow wallet, so here we are in the Sparrow wallet. You can see I have one ordinal in here. What you're gonna do is we're gonna go over and we're going to copy the transaction output. And if you see here, if you click, right click into different spots, it gives you different things. Copying the transaction output is important. I actually am unsure why, but they want to make, you want to make sure that the output on ordinals.com is zero. Apparently if it's not, if it's something different than zero, then you can, you'll be at risk for losing your asset. So once you copy the, the UTXO, you come in here and you paste it and it'll bring up your asset. And what you can do here is you could come down here and it shows you, this is the Taproot Punk. Of course it doesn't say Taproot Punk because it's all user created, it just shows you the inscription number. You see the ID, it shows you the address that it sits inside. And then down here at the bottom it says offset zero. So it says offset zero, it means that you are safe to transfer it to another address. And this is now what we're about to do. So we're gonna go back over to Sparrow. Well first actually we're gonna have to copy the address again. So we're gonna go over here, we're gonna go to Taproot, we're gonna copy that, and now we're gonna go back to Sparrow. Yeah, a lot of steps, but I promise it, it gets simple. So you sit, see this, we're gonna click on the asset, and you're gonna press send selected sets. And you're gonna pay it to, you're gonna paste this in here, and you're gonna label it. I highly advise to label it specifically what you're doing and where you're sending it. It'll help you in the long run so that it doesn't mix. So I'm gonna say sending Taproot Punk 
from Sparrow to Emblem Vault. And so here it shows the, the amount of sats needed. Again, you don't have to send BTC beforehand. Some people do, you don't have to. You don't need extra BTC in your wallet because it pulls some of the sats from within the, the UTXO to send. That's why it says 8,668. So what we're gonna do here for the, the sats range to be a high priority, we were going to want to check. And what you're going to want to do is we're going to go over to the mempool. You can see down here, right here, you see, we'll refresh it even just, just in case it changes. So right here, it says low priority, medium priority, high priority. I generally want to st stick around the medium priority. Sometimes I'll go medium high just so it sends a lot faster. Bitcoin blocks are every 10 minutes. So if it's low, it could take up to hours. So for this example, I'm going to want to speed it up as fast as possible so that we can uh, move on with this. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to send it at about 12 to 13 just to speed this up. So you could come down here and you can see where the rate is. So you see it says high priority. If you move it, you can kind of see everything. So we're going to come over here again. We're going to do 13. Make sure that the max one UTXO is selected so that you are not at fault of losing and make sure this is again where you want it to be that changed because I clicked on mempool size. So what we're gonna do now is you're gonna hit create transaction. Down here in the bottom, see this? You're gonna to wanna to make sure that that's flicked on. That's so that it could read to the blockchain. I actually made the mistake the first time and had no idea what was going on and uh, could not figure it out for the life of me. So right now, then you're gonna hit finalize, then you're gonna hit sign, and then broadcast transaction. And now you can see that's unconfirmed. See up here at the top it says Sparrow, cat, dad, new, Transaction. So what we can do now to go check is copy the transaction ID, which is up here in the corner. And then we go back over to the mempool. Now, once the transaction is confirmed, you can literally come in here and see, you can see right here. So it says it was just sent, which, cause we literally just sent it. ETA is in equivalent of nine minutes and it gives you all the information. As you see here, 13.3 sats, that's what we chose on Sparrow wallet. And up here to the top right, you can see that it says unconfirmed. So once it's confirmed, it'll tell you, this will turn green, it'll say confirmed, and then it'll appear in our emblem vault, which is right over here. And it'll appear over here as BTC. And so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna sit here and wait for it to confirm. And once it does, we'll go through the rest of the steps. Okay, so that actually only took one minute ago, you can see because of how many uh, or what the sats per byte usage was. It's good, that's fast. That's what happens when you use more sats per byte. You could go over here, as you could see, the Bitcoin, the sats, and the ordinals have showed up. I am the owner. And the way to confirm is go to Taproot, and you could see here, BC1, P2, 1. And you come down here, and you could see on the inscription page, BC1, P2, 1. And sometimes you even wanna refresh it just to make sure. And you can see 68MY, and that's probably about the same. Yeah, 68, and it gets cut off right there at the end. So that's how you set, successfully send it. But there is something that we should clarify. See here, it says empty vault, please research. So we wanna make sure that the marketplaces are rendering our assets. So what you're gonna do here is very important. You're gonna come over to LooksRare first. The reason why is that we believe OpenSea is pinging off of LooksRare's API. So you have to come down here and refresh it right here over at LooksRare. And then what you're gonna do in this exact order is you're gonna come down here and hit refresh balance. And then you're gonna go over to OpenSea. And once you go to OpenSea, see it says empty vault, please research. It's because their API is behind. And so usually when you have about a 30 second delay in between, so you could see here, it is refreshing. And then eventually you hit refresh and it will refresh here. So just hold on and wait for a second. All right, so it took about 30 seconds to a minute and I waited. As you could see on LooksRare first, you wanna wait on here, specifically LooksRare. And once the empty vault sign goes away, then you know that it's okay to then go over to OpenSea and hit refresh. You see the BTC there, it's showing, right? Everything's reading, OpenSea pings against LooksRare, unsure why, maybe they're saving costs uh, or whatnot. And then what you wanna do is you're gonna wait about 20, 30 seconds, you hit refresh, and then the empty vault goes away. Ta-da, there it is. Now your tap root punk, your inscription, your ordinal, whatever you wanna call it, is good to go on OpenSea. You're ready to trade it and store it or do whatever you like. So thank you guys for listening and watching, and we'll see you on the next video.